Well, Yvonne, it was standard and remains standard for Taiwanese presidents when they visit their few remaining Central American diplomatic partners to stop over in the US and to meet American officials. Beijing would grumble about it, but so long as those American officials are not too high up, uh, China wouldn't do much about it. But uh, President Tsai Ing-wen hasn't made a trip like this since before the pandemic. And a lot has changed in the past three or four years, particularly after the visit of then US House Speaker to Taipei, Nancy Pelosi, in the middle of last year. When she did that, the Chinese government of Xi Jinping responded by firing missiles over Taiwan and around Taiwan. Uh, Xi Jinping sent fighter jets, bombers and warships across the middle of the Taiwan Strait to the Taiwanese side surrounding the island. And there was also economic punishment for some Taiwanese food exporters uh, on top of existing economic punishment for Taiwan's tourism sector. So um, for this reason, you can imagine that Xi Jinping does not want to take a backward step in his pressure campaign on both the Taiwanese and US governments trying to dissuade high level contact. And uh, even though we uh, are not very sure about who she will meet on her first stopover in New York, when she comes back from those two Central American countries, Guatemala and Belize, she is making the stopover on the way back to Taiwan in Los Angeles. And that is where all indications suggest she will meet the new Republican House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Well, tell us why this potential meeting with US House Speaker Kevin McCarthy could be a good outcome for Beijing. Well, before he was House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy pledged, if he becomes the Speaker, to do what Nancy Pelosi did and travel to Taiwan, to, to stand up to Chinese military pressure, to stand up to uh, Beijing's intimidation. Now he is the House Speaker. There is uh, some pressure on him to go through with that trip, seeing he did pledge to do it. But we're actually seeing reports from some US media suggesting that it's actually Tsai Ing-wen's government that is dissuading him from coming to Taiwan, primarily for two reasons. The first is that according to the Taiwanese, they believe Xi Jinping would respond with potentially just as much sabre-rattling if not an even more dramatic show of force to make a point if Kevin McCarthy did come here. So already there's been extensive military pressure on Taiwan's forces. After that visit of Pelosi last year, it's not like it was just a four or five day show of force. Since then, Chinese planes and ships on an almost daily basis have crossed the median line and are flying and sailing closer to Taiwan than ever before. So that's now become a regular thing that Taiwan's forces have to deal with. But the second uh, thing that apparently she is worried about is that there is an election coming up in about 10 months time here in Taiwan. Her party is seeking to be re-elected with a new president because of term limits she can't run again. Now, although Chinese sabre rattling has traditionally benefited her party, the DPP, there is a school of thought that if Beijing was to unleash another wave of military exercises aimed at Taiwan, plus potentially more economic retaliation hurting uh, more Taiwanese exporters, that maybe the voters in Taiwan would be less forgiving and might actually blame her party, the DPP, for inviting a second US House Speaker to the island in less than a year. So we understand these are the reasons why the Taiwanese side is urging uh, Kevin McCarthy to do that meeting on American soil, uh, which looks very likely to happen on the way back. And it's just generally seen as something China will respond to, but it's not quite as big a provocation for Xi Jinping uh, as it would be having a second House Speaker here in Taiwan. It'll be really interesting to see uh, what happens if that meeting takes place in the US. Meanwhile, Bill, all this is happening while Tsai Ing-wen's predecessor, former President Ma Ying-jeou, is in China. Yeah, so it's pretty uh, striking to see the two presidents, the current president Tsai Ing-wen on US soil and her predecessor Ma Ying-jeou in China at the same time. Talk about contrasts. Now, it's not that surprising that Ma Ying-jeou becomes the first former Taiwanese president to go to China. He was the first president at the time to meet China's president, Xi Jinping. That happened in Singapore in 2015 in an historic summit. 
you've got to expect that uh, Ma Ying Zhou's decision to make this trip now, and remember, it's not just him flying to China to visit his aunt, to pay respect to his ancestors, which is the stated reason for the trip. Something like this is only happening because the Chinese government is inviting him and coordinating the trip on their end. You can't help but think it ha also has to do with the upcoming election in Taiwan. Uh, Ma Ying Zhou isn't just uh, visiting cities and uh, seeing, you know, the ancestral homes and, and graves of his family members. He's also uh, involved in some sort of activity dialogue with Taiwanese students, bringing them over to China as well. He has stressed that Chinese are on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. He's very big on the idea of one China, we're all the one family. Doesn't mean he wants the communists rolling in here and, you know, taking away, um, you know, sites like Google and imposing internet uh, censorship and political repression, but he does very much want to send a message that he is against Taiwanese separatism, Taiwanese independence. And even though that's not the official policy of Tsai Ing-wen's government, uh, there are many people who support her who kind of lean in that direction. So. Yvonne, it's probably to do with the election coming up. Ma ying Zhou trying to send a message that the KMT is the party of peace. The KMT is the party, frankly, that China wants in power in Taiwan. The KMT is the party where if your sons or daughters grow up, particularly in Taiwan, your sons, it is far less likely they will be involved in a war getting shot at by the Chinese. Whereas the message I think he's trying to subtly send is if voters next year re-elect Tsai Ing-wen's party, the DPP, they're a little bit too provocative, they're a little bit too forward in standing up for Taiwan, and that may lead to conflict down the track. Fascinating, Bill. Thanks for updating us. Really appreciate it. Thanks.